I'm not gonna lie you guys, I've done things I'm not proud of to get this plant in this pot. Just saying. Hey, what's up you guys? I'm Caitlin from Leave Me Alone Plants. And today we will be talking about one of my favorite plants in my collection. I literally say that in every video, but for real, one of my favorite plants in my collection, the Calathea Grey Star. I also think I say this every time I bring a Calathea onto this channel, but I swear that this is one of the easiest Calatheas to take care of. I know people are so often scared away thinking that they're really difficult to take care of, but I promise that they're not. So if you are thinking about getting one of these plants or if you have one of these plants, then keep on watching and I'm gonna tell you how to keep them happy and healthy. So like so many of the plants that I have acquired recently, I actually got this plant on a trip where I said that I wasn't going to buy any plants. But of course, I always have to walk through the plant aisle just to be sure that there's nothing too interesting there and well that's where I found this gray star. It kind of went something like this. I don't need it. I need it! And the rest is history. Now, interestingly enough, as much publicity and love that Calatheas get, I feel like this plant in particular doesn't get too much attention. But in my opinion, I think it's a really, really cool one. So as always, I think the elephant in the room with Calathea and the reason that so many people get deterred, deterred from them is they feel like they need a ridiculous amount of humidity. And while well, like most Calathea, these guys are recommended to get somewhere around 75% humidity. I live here in Arizona. My house typically is around 30% humidity and this guy has not had any problems with it thus far. Now, you may be looking at this plant and saying, uh, Caitlin, I see some crispy edges on there. I know that your plant is having problems with low humidity. Damn. And to that, I would say, that is how this plant looks when I got it, but I have slowly been nursing it back to health and none of the new growth has crispy leaves on it. Damn. So overall, I, I feel like I say this all the time, while this plant would probably enjoy more humidity if I did offer it to it, it doesn't seem to mind the fact that my house only has 30% humidity. So don't let that scare you away from getting one of these plants. Now that brings us into watering. And interestingly enough, I feel like this Calathea is not quite as thirsty as some of my other ones. I find myself only going in to water this Calathea maybe once every week, maybe once every 10 days. Now, if you see my beauty star and uh, maybe you can see my medallion down there, those Calathea, on the other hand, I probably find myself watering every like three to four days and they throw a huge temper tantrum if I don't. So but it's also really great to be able to have a Calathea that I can get away with missing some waterings in between my normal schedule and not having this guy freak out. As for lighting, I have this guy in a pretty shady corner. He does get a little bit of bright light during the middle of the day um, that kind of seeps in and touches some of his leaves, but for the most part, he's in a pretty shady corner. And since I brought him home, he's put out a ton of new growth. So to me, that indicates that he is getting just enough light. In fact, he seems quite happy over there. Now, of course, one of the coolest things, in my opinion, about Calatheas is that they move. You may or may not be able to tell, but this guy is actually starting to fold himself up for the night right now. However, one thing that I always say about Calathea is if this is your first Calathea or if you have some others and when you first bring them home, they aren't moving, they aren't praying for you, don't freak out right away. I find that it's very common that my Calathea, when I first bring them home from the store, tend to not pray for the first week or two. Um, and I really think that it is just their adjustment period, getting used to their new environment, getting used to my house. And typically after them, they will start moving more and more for me as time goes on. So don't freak out if it is not moving right away. It likely will, you just have to give it some time. Some other problems that you may run into with Calathea, um, a really common one is you'll find that the leaves are curling up on you, kind of like folded in half almost. And if that's happening, really that is a sign that they are just not getting enough water. Um, Sadly, I'm looking at my rattlesnake Calathea over here in the corner and uh, I missed a couple of waterings on that guy and they are pretty folded up, but if you go in with a good watering, if you catch it soon enough, they should eventually unfold on you and be okay. So if that's happening, don't worry, all hope is not lost. As for pests on these guys, personally, I have never had a problem with pests on my Calathea, but I have heard people mention that they have a big issue with spider mites, so if you run into that horrid problem, then uh, really just misting your leaves or cleaning off your leaves regularly can be a good way to avoid that. A final concern that a lot of people have with Calathea is the water that you use with them. Now, I've said this in other Calathea videos before, personally, I use my tap water here. We live in Arizona, honestly, our water, I it's 
disgusting. I don't like to even drink it unfiltered. It's not very good, but for some reason, my Calathea don't seem to mind it at all. Um, I'm not sure if there's just a lower density of salts in our water or what it is, but I do not have a problem using tap water. With that said, if you're noticing yellowing spots, if you're noticing a lot of crisping on your leaves and you're giving it good humidity, consider switching to either a distilled water, a filtered water, or grab the water out of your dehumidifier. And those can be really great ways to eliminate that problem. While I don't personally experience it, these plants can get a little sassy and rebel if they are not getting uh, the highest grade of water. Another great thing about most Calatheas in this guy in particular is that they are pet friendly. So if you have little critters crawling around your home, they will be just fine around this guy. All right, you guys, well, I think that is where I am going to end this video today. But as always, if you have questions about the Grey Star or other Calatheas, um, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. I will also link my other Calathea videos that I have down below here too, so you can check those out. If you learned something new in this video, please don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps me out. And also hit that subscribe button so that you can see more videos like this care video in the future, as well as other fun videos. I have a couple plant experiments that are underway right now, so those videos will be coming out sometime in the near future so if you want to be sure to see them then please hit that subscribe button thank you guys so much for checking out this video and i hope to see you in the next one